Hello guys and welcome to another unobtained episode So as you can see we're actually already in 1.12 That's not because I skipped all the other versions But it's because I didn't make videos on them because I was quite busy with school So let's get right into it so as you guys can see in 15w35a I collected a lot of these no AI zombies um, Because in that snapshot all zombie type mobs that would spawn would have the no AI tag set to 1 So they don't move which is kinda funny In the next snapshot I noticed that a part of the Hermitcraft 3 world download actually became part of my world somehow so we're actually still my world and you can see Tango's base from Hermitcraft 3 here and as you guys can see I collected a few ender dragons in boats in 15w42a correction that should be 15w47c before actually updating to these 1.9 snapshots I built this big pillar at 0, 0 in the end so that the exit portal would spawn up there which is uh, useful for a mega build I want to do in the end uh, in 1.12 and over here is my oversized mop in boat collection from 16w03a in 1.10.2 I wanted to collect a bunch of wither skeletons riding skeleton horses and I used this setup for it. So uh, wh what it was able to do in 1.10.2 was uh, it was able to save state the chunk with all of those uh, wither skeleton uh, of, with all of those uh, trapped skeleton horses then you could lead them outside of this chunk using a uh, what's it called piston warp setup so it would warp them uh, out of the chunk over here then you could relog and the original horses would be back there again and then you could lead the extra horses back into this chunk which meant you could multiply them and they wouldn't take entity crumbing damage because that wasn't added yet in 1.10.2 and after I would have enough I would save, date, save state this chunk again and then I would uh, go up here and I would let the horses go into that chamber up there and then if you get within 10 blocks of them the skeleton horse traps would activate and then they would uh, turn into all of those uh, wither skeletons and this was uh, all done using uh, piston warping as you can see so it doesn't work anymore unfortunately but the save stating method would still work and here you can see of a bunch of these uh, horses and I would kill them too for the, the their heads so uh, all in all a pretty cool setup I would say this box is here so you wouldn't accidentally activate the trapped horses by the way and over here you guys can see my lightning farm setup so if I uh, click this button I'll be able to uh, click the button in uh, with my player which is over to the left and it will activate the redstone line and it will spawn a ton of lightning here you hear no sounds because I turned them off because it was way too loud so um, it activates this redstone line um, which loads a bunch of chunks and it uh, will make the uh, trapped horses over there if you're a bit lucky I don't know if this is a trapped one yeah apparently it is so you can get a ton of those trapped horses uh, using this method 
while I was still in Wonder Tender 2, I actually made this save state based shulker farm. So if I press this button here, it will activate and it will start killing the shulkers, which are actually all the way. Oh, wait. Oh, this is supposed to activate it, okay. So if I click this, it will send a quick pulse to over there and it will activate the safe state and then it will uh, push the shulkers over well at least it should okay it should have pushed the shulkers over uh, I should activate it with this thing okay so <laughs> if I press this lever then it will send a zero tick pulse and you can see the shulker is starting to die over there um, so what it does is it uh, updates this hopper this hopper is in the disabled mode so uh, because of uh, it thinks it has this redstone block next to it but it actually doesn't so this repeater updates it so it isn't uh, in the disabled mode anymore and then it puts the one of those ban books into this chest which makes it safe stated and then uh, right after that this piston gets uh, a one tick pulse which means it pushes this block forward and there are a bunch of shulkers here and they get pushed into uh, 24 minecarts over here, one of which is a hopper minecart. So they get entity cramped, and then their shulker shells are dropped into here. While I was uh, building that in Wonder Tenet 2, I also built this uh, huge path to the ender crystal generator which is all the way over here now so uh, that's kind of cool and over here in this hole I have a lot of uh, wrong trade villagers so this is actually right so for example this uh, cleric is trading Fletcher trades and this toolsmith is doing shepherd trades this farmer is doing butcher trades and this is all possible by curing uh, zombie villagers in a particular snapshot um, and as you can see this nitwit actually has trades which is uh, quite interesting and there are also some villagers which don't have trades at all over here because they yeah example for example i'm clicking this uh, librarian over here and he is uh, he has no uh, trades because he got like the nitwit trades so that's uh, all quite interesting i would i would say Oh, and I forgot to say that I obtained these in uh, 16W33A by curing zombie villagers. And over here is another interesting area. I obtained a bunch of these Exless Vindicators, which is just uh, Vindicators without axes. As you can see, they're holding nothing in their hand. And if I go over here, the chunks are bugged. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here, but anyways, um, I have this uh, chunk safe state over here. Um, so I could spread out those books, and then I could uh, go over here, and then I could kill this uh, uh, guy over here, and I could get an infinite amount of totems that way. Just not automated at all. And uh, another interesting thing, I actually lit up this entire mansion. So I placed uh, glowstone on the floor and below the carpet and stuff. So no mobs can actually spawn anymore inside of this mansion, which I think is pretty cool. So you could actually use this as a, a base if you would want. I forgot to place some carpet here, I can see. 
So over here is another interesting build I did. I made a guardian farm. This one is actually designed by a YouTuber called IMGB. And you can find the video link in the description of this video if you'd like to build it too. Um, you currently don't see any guardians and I will show you in a later clip why that is. Um, so there's this cool collection system and you uh, might be wondering with what this water is actually being held up. Well it's actually uh, held up by these signs but I currently have tall entity rendering turned off because if you look at uh, a lot of signs I think this is like a 50 by 50 of signs then your game lags like a crazy amount. It's unbelievable. My FPS just drops. So the TPS is fine, but the FPS absolutely dies. So uh, I won't show you that to you guys. And I obtained a bunch of these special bows, which are uh, bows which have the infinity and the mending enchantment because they. Uh, they are special because the these two enchantments become mutually exclusive with another so you can't get a bow with both mending and infinity in the future so I obtained a bunch of these some have flame which I personally don't really like uh, so that's why I only have a few of those and after doing that, I uh, updated to the current version, 1.12.0. And in that version, I built this uh, gold farm, which is designed by Il Mango. I will also have a link in the description uh, to his video uh, about this gold farm. And um, yeah, apparently the angering pigmen on the side here are gone so it won't work could fix that with some spawn eggs but it's a really fast gold farm uh, basically they spawn on the magma and they walk all the way to here then they fall down and by a few piston tapes their stuff gets pushed to the middle over some hopper mine cards and all the gold gets collected in these chests and as you guys can see we're back in the end once again because I built this 2x2 two two spruce tree farm over here. So it's a huge farm. Basically you stand here in this minecart and then you place uh, saplings here. And the 2x2 two two trees get grown and they get pushed all the way over here. And from being a vertical column, they get uh, pushed all the way around to here, and then they are a horizontal line. And then these TNT dupers can easily blow them up while they are in the block 36 uh, stage. So this uh, farm is actually designed by activation, and once again there will be a video in the description if you want to watch it and then we go into this place in the end which is a perma loader if you uh, already know what a perma loader is this will sound very similar but i will try to explain it to the people that don't know it so basically uh, there are a bunch of uh, chunks here and hoppers pointing into chunk borders and these hoppers have items inside. Uh, basically if that chunk over there is loaded with this hopper inside it, this hopper will instantly load this chunk in the same tick that that one is loaded. Because uh, it has an item inside and it tries to check, it has to check if there is a block entity over here to put the item inside. So uh, to check what type of block this block over here is, it has to load this entire chunk. And the whole interesting part about this is that these are uh, zero chunks. Unload priority zero chunks. So basically what that means is that uh, this chunk 
will unload uh, the first. So um, during an auto auto save, the uh, game tries to unload all chunks that don't need to be loaded. So all chunks around the player are loaded, and it's logical. And the game is like, okay, these should stay loaded, but all the other chunks should be unloaded. Um, and it does that in a particular order so it will start by unloading the zero chunks then it will unload the one chunks then the two chunks obviously etc so the cool thing about this is that during an autosave uh, the autosave can only unload 100 chunks in total for lag purposes obviously because if you start unloading more the other save might start lagging uh, a lot so all the other chunks get scheduled for the next tick or something and the cool thing is that if you load 100 of these zero chunks each tick it means that um, none other chunks can get unloaded but these zero chunks or other zero chunks so it tries to unload all of these 100 zero chunks and when it has uh, unloaded all of these zero chunks the very next tick uh, we have a 15 chunk over here which is still loaded and it also has these hoppers pointing into a zero chunk and then it has these hoppers pointing into one chunk once again and then pointing into a zero chunk etc so you have this huge line over here of chunks which all load each other making it so that the autosave can't actually unload uh, chunks so if a player uh, crosses a chunk border uh, the the chunks in the distance which should be unloaded actually still get unloaded so that works properly still but uh, if you leave via a nether portal or uh, uh, teleport away chunks can stay loaded uh, and those chunks won't un and those chunks won't unload so that has a lot of interesting use cases and i will show you one in the next clip so my personal favorite uh, use case of this uh, autosave, uh, this perma loader, is that you can create mob switches with it. So I currently have uh, entity rendering turned off because there are like 200 winter skeletons here and it would uh, make the uh, FPS uh, drop a lot if it would render all of those but they are in vine so they technically shouldn't enter the frame a few are because they are in the exit center over there and these wither skeletons um, when they are loaded inside of a lazy chunk a lazy processing chunk they don't actually uh, they can't despawn if the player is further than 128 blocks away uh, mobs usually despawn but if they are in a lazy chunk they can't this also makes it so that um, um, if your render distance is set to 8 your uh, far mob farms won't work because uh, mobs will definitely stay inside of lazy chunks and not be able to despawn because uh, you can only look 128 blocks far away in a chunks so there are, and there are layer of lazy chunks uh, where a mobs will be inside of the uh, and that's why your farms won't work but uh, this allows for me to actually use uh, a mob switch in uh, certain dimensions so if I fly away from here with my render distance lower than uh, 9, then I can uh, keep these uh, wither skeletons here without them despawning. So that's the first thing. If I fly away here, they will uh, stay loaded because of this uh, grid here, which also has hoppers with items inside, which instantly 
load those chunks even if I leave them so they continuously get loaded but because I left there with my render distance too low the wither skeletons couldn't despawn if I turn my render distance up to my usual amount again the wither skeletons are still over there and if I go to the main end island over here uh, you see that uh, even though the light level is low enough for them to spawn they can't actually spawn over here so that's really cool so you can make mob switches with these permaloaders so another cool contraption I built in this world is actually this uh, update suppressor so an update suppressor is a device which can uh, as the name already suggests suppress updates uh, so what does that actually mean so um, it means that um, if I for example place a block here the update suppressor or, uh, automatically reactivates I have it set up that way and I place a redstone torch against this block the torch updates the rail so that's why that happens if I break this block the torch stays hanging in the air so uh, I can right click this and it actually isn't a ghost block so it is still in midair and this uh, block isn't uh, isn't here so I can just stand here and stuff uh, but you also saw that the sandstone block didn't drop when I mined it so that's another side effect of update suppression if I place this block uh, it will seem as if the count in my inventory uh, lowered so you can see it says 44 here but if I update it by clicking on it here it will actually show 46 because uh, this block is still here but this block is also in the world now so that actually means uh, a few different things so you can dupe blocks with this you can duplicate them by uh, if I turn this machine off real quick and I then mine it then uh, it will drop so I will have duplicated that sandstone block so the machine is turned off now I can uh, just mine this block now oh why oh it uh, I did, just didn't see it so and I got it in my inventory so you can duplicate blocks with this you can create floating blocks with this you can do a lot of very cool stuff with this and how does it work actually so how does it cause this update suppression basically what it does is um, the first thing that happens when you uh, place a block is it will update the blocks around it so um, for example this redstone torch shouldn't be hanging in the air so if I place a block next to it uh, it will cause an a block update to this redstone torch I'm pretty sure and then it will pop off uh, it actually doesn't oh it's a ghost yeah it's a ghost block so it it uh, broke that torch that was hanging in midair here and that's uh, obviously that way because of a number of reasons so if I break this block this torch should pop off so it should um, actually uh, let this port torch pop off but it actually doesn't because the block update doesn't get processed because there are a ton of rails over here and these rails are actually budded so as you can see these uh, repeaters aren't turned on it only uh, the rails only think that uh, they are powered so when you cause a block update to a rail here it'll uh, instantly notify all the rails around it like hey hey uh, I changed the state and you guys should update too and all of these like 8000 rails instantly update and then it uh, fills your uh, memory that you have allocated to Minecraft and then it says uh, it causes a little crash in the code a stack overflow and then it uh, because it's an update caused by a player 
it will keep the game running it doesn't uh, hard crash it but it does actually um, it doesn't process the updates it should and this allows for way more than just duplicating way cooler stuff for example it allows for this uh, shocker box that you can't open because it has chest in bt so if i do slash block data and then that block over there you can see it says that it's actually a minecraft chest block while it really shouldn't so it's a shocker box with chest data and you can actually put uh, items into that chest so i can cannot open it And now, for one of the coolest, but also one of the hardest projects I've ever undertaken in survival Minecraft. A machine that can be activated by placing this block. is a machine that allows for some of the coolest stuff in Minecraft to happen. It's an instant tile tick activator so as you saw there this water actually flowed instantly so if I pick this up again it disappears instantly in the same tick I pick this water up it uh, triggers uh, all of the necessary updates for the water to disappear so why does this actually happen well it's because of this gargantuan device i actually built so 
uh, let's go through this step by step. So first of all, uh, this is a bot activator. So if I uh, hit this lever, all of these rails will be butted. So they're all butted now. So if I update them by placing a block, they all turn off. And what this entire bot line here does is it um, it loads this chunk and I couldn't just use uh, hoppers and uh, hoppers with items inside to load this chunk because this chunk needs to be loaded via a player update and when this chunk gets loaded it generates this uh, water in this wall over here so if I turn on chunk borders you guys can see there is a chunk border here so this uh, chunk just got generated and uh, it's um, by cross population it actually populates uh, water in a different chunk that isn't important but it, it uh, allows this water to generate here and when it generates this water this water uh, flows over a power drill here so I will quickly um, remove this water and um, place it back like the way it's supposed to be by the way this is on a backup of my world so that's the reason that I don't instantly place uh, a books uh, in this chunk again to uh, save state it once again I will have to sleep because if a creeper blows up around here it would be really bad all oh, right, the mob switch is on. I forgot already. Uh, anyways, um, so this uh, chunk gets loaded. It generates that water source, uh, this water spring in the wall over here. And what that uh, generating of that spring at that block does is it uh, um, runs a special line in the code, which is... Uh, it turns instant tile tick on so basically what it does is it instant uh, it turns it on that water flows instantly and why is that done well if you come uh, across a, a big flat wall like this one uh, it sometimes generates these springs and uh, the game wants to have that water done flowing at the same time the chunk is generated so it doesn't look like the water is still flowing down it has to look like this chunk has always been this way even before generating right that's realism and it turns this instant tile tick on basically meaning that all the tile ticks in the game get activated instantly so um, this water uses a tile tick to update itself in five ticks so normally water flows one block every five ticks and then it schedules a tile tick for the block it flows into so that block gets updated uh, in the next five ticks and then when it gets updated it generates a new flow flowing block and it schedules a tile tick for that block etc that way it flows every uh, five ticks without just being stopped half halfway or something so it um, does that it turns that line of code on that enables instant tile ticking and then while instant tile ticking is still on it breaks the power drill that's over here so you have a power drill line over here. It breaks this power drill, which is on top of a redstone block, and at the same time updates this one. And then this guy realizes, hey, I shouldn't be powered anymore because the power drill on top of the redstone block is gone. So it causes this whole chain, and this is a butt line once again, and it goes around this corner, around this chunk, all the way over here, and then up these stairs and then around this corner and then it eventually arrives at the big update suppressor so uh, and then update suppression occurs and basically what it does is it prevents 
a line of code saying, hey, we should turn instantatic off because otherwise in every chunk of the world people could make water flow instantly and that kind of stuff that shouldn't happen. So uh, it prevents the line of code which should uh, turn instantatic off from actually running. So that line doesn't run and then it stays on for the entire rest of the world. Um, so, and that's coded pretty dumb because they could have just turned instantatic on for that single chunk. But anyway, they did it that way and all tactics happen instantly. So these repeaters all activate instantly and stuff. And, um, another interesting one is buttons. I don't know if I still have some stuff over there. Yeah, absolute chest monster over here. Uh, I'm great at organizing my stuff, guys. Uh, don't don't worry about it. Um, a button, but if you press a button, it uh, depowers instantly because it schedules a tall tick uh, over ten ticks. So over ten ticks, it updates itself and it turns off usually. But now it uh, that tall tick. Uh, gets executed in the same tick, it gets scheduled, and then it happens instantly. So that happens for all things, and it's pretty cool. But uh, now you might be thinking, quite logically, what happens if you have uh, a thing that generates a loop of tile ticks? So um, as you might already know, if you have a contraption like this, and uh, this guy is in the uh, Subtract mode, and then repeater and redstone torch, uh, like this. And if this guy receives power 15 from the back, it creates a little clock. But what happens now, if I place this block and it gets power 15, it turns on. And that might seem kind of strange, like why does it happen? Why doesn't it like crash the game or something? So this is actually the smallest update suppressor in Minecraft. So basically you see 21 and if I hit this it's 22 just like an update suppressor would do. Uh, it actually does drop the block so it isn't quite like the big update suppressor. But it suppresses these updates. Um, because it has to update uh, like this red zone an infinite amount of time and itself an infinite amount of time it does like 250 loops or something and then it's like well uh, update suppression right so um, unlike the big update suppressor this allows for duping entire shulker boxes full of stuff so the stuff gets kept inside and if I click here I, I uh, oh right this doesn't re generate power 15 does it? Uh, this allows for hopefully it worked now yes okay so it allows for duping shulker boxes at a time uh, unlike the bigger update suppressor uh, up there uh, because if you go. Did it just suppress my rockets? Okay. I uh, understand update suppression very well. Don't even worry about it. Okay, so if I reactivate this big suppressor, it will cause a big lag spike because all of the piston change ac activate. So, lag. Lag? Shouldn't it lag? I understand my builds perfectly. Okay, it broke. Did, did it break? Did I break my update suppressor? Oh, instantaltic. Uh, <laughs> instantaltic prevents this update suppressor from being activated. At least uh, if you place a shulker box next to this line, it would uh, make a shulker box without anything inside, actually. So uh, that doesn't work for duping entire shulker boxes. So this instantatic stuff is really cool and it allows for even more stuff. It allows for uh, 
for example, this concrete power can uh, powder can fall instantly now. Uh, so it falls instantly onto this vine. Well, so if I place it, place it here, you can see it like instantly jitters to down below, right? And it allows for even more cool stuff. Um, so over here in the Nether now, you can see it's an absolute mess over here. On the minimap, you can see it's like a, 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 a rocket uh, fell down here and broke a bunch of bedrock. Well. These dragon eggs fall instantly too. So if I enable F5, you can perhaps see one falling down. So these dragon eggs, when they fall, they fall instantly too. And you might know already about instant, uh, instantly falling dragon eggs, is that they break bedrock. So as you can see, if you rewind the video for like 10 seconds or something, you can see that the dragon egg uh, fell down over there. So these uh, dragon eggs can break bedrock without the use of lazy chunks. So you can uh, break bedrock in the spawn chunks and stuff. So this instantaltic device is like actually really cool. So uh, I suggest you guys uh, try to build it in your world and um, perhaps I can help a bit. And uh, this instantaltic was discovered by Coolman, and he has a better explanation uh, in his video, which I will also link in the description. So after I did that massive project, which took a month, mind you, um, I built this. Uh, I started doing simpler projects again, and I uh, made this. Uh, Permaloader in the overworld, it does the exact same thing as uh, the permaloader in the end. I mainly built it because I really wanted a uh, mobs, uh, function, a functioning mob switch in the uh, overworld. And that mob switch gets loaded uh, from the spawn chunks over here. So there is a, a hopper line you can see over here and it runs into a chunk with a bunch of skeletons uh, which get loaded so that no uh, mobs actually spawn. And after that I did uh, another bunch of small projects. So I built this little uh, super smelter over here which allowed me to smelt a bunch of glass which I mostly needed to uh, build this uh, stone generator I have over here. So if I click this, it will start lagging. Yay, lag. And then uh, you can mine stone over here, which all gets collected into chests, which allows me to get a bunch more comparators and repeaters mostly. Uh, because I like hate mining in this game, so I uh, don't do that, so I don't have like stone at all. And then we arrive at the exact other end of the end. So if I go through this uh, save stated portal, um, it will generate a new portal on top of the two I already collected over here. And you can see the third update suppressor of this world. And um, let me just clean my garbage up. Uh, as you can see, if you save state an end gateway and then you uh, go through it while it doesn't have the uh, exit portal MBT, it can generate new gateways like this one or like um, the 50 other ones over here I, genera I generated. These uh, guys appear empty, but uh, as you can see, they have a hitbox. So they are actually tall entity lists. So they have no uh, tall entity uh, associated with them at all. And I did a bunch of mesh messing around here with these gateways, which was a lot of fun. And I, I gener generated a ton of talent to this ones. And I generated uh, some more or less useless ones. Uh, I actually really like this one, uh, which is over here. Because uh, if you jump, you can, it's like uh, one of those elevators from modded. If you jump, you can, uh, 
go onto this platform because uh, the entity it is linked up to is actually down here uh, there down there so I think that's re really funny uh, which and it wasn't even planned so that was quite a lot of fun and you might ask well you already have an update suppressor in the end why would you need another one next to all of these weird end gateways you generated well um for uh, sh uh item shadowing to actually function properly and uh, you need to uh leave the chunk right it's in uh, if you want to do stuff around your world you have to leave uh, the chunk and uh, you can keep chunks loaded while you go away, but they temporarily get unloaded and saved to disk if you leave them manually. And that breaks the shadow item. But the cool thing about gateways is, um, unlike just walking away, uh, if you go through here, it, it uh, the game counts it as a teleport. And when you teleport, uh, actually it doesn't unload any chunks so these chunks can keep being loaded uh, which allows me to build a cool uh, item shadowing setup here for like uh, stake and stuff and, and uh, rockets so I don't have to uh, refill those manually anymore and I can uh, build setups where if I go mining uh, that's not a very likely case but if I go mining then it can take away items from my inventory and stuff and, and store them over here. So that's what this third update suppressor is meant for. So I uh, have uh, much more building to do around here to uh, finish that item shadowing setup I've planned. So I hope you guys liked this unobtained episode and I hope you guys didn't think it was too long. If I look into the recording, I uh, think it's already almost 40 minutes, so uh, uh, that's a long one, but it contains the progress updates of the past like five months, so that's quite logical. And I hope you guys don't mind that uh, I actually missed a bunch of projects in this video, which weren't too interesting. Like, I uh, try to build something over there, but uh, I'm a terrible builder, so uh, it didn't work out too well and stuff. And, yeah, so uh, if you have another cool suggestion for a 1.12 build, uh, I could do, uh, because uh, I'm going to be staying in 1.12 for a while, definitely. Uh, please leave it in the comments, and, uh, well... I uh, just uh, hope you guys enjoyed another episode of Unobtained.